but uh, of course the reason that I'm here is very, very personal. And I assume it's uh, personal for all of you as well. Either you've had, um, you've seen the effect of gun violence in your own lives, or you're personally invested in the future and the safety of, of your country. How many people here have um, been personally affected by gun violence? And an easier question, how many, pe how many of you have a personal stake in the future of your country, either through the communities that you live in, through the families that you're raising? So it's a big deal. As for me, I was, um, I'm, I'm originally from El Paso, Texas, like Allison said, I co-founded an organization called Americans Responsible Solutions, and I'll tell you how that all came to pass. I had, um, um, you know, I grew up in Texas, but then ended up spending about eight years working for members of Congress on Capitol Hill in Washington. In, uh, how many of you guys remember 2010? It was a, it was a tough year for Democrats and progressives, right? Well, um, me and my boss, along with uh, over 60 other Democrats, lost our jobs. So I was sort of casting about looking for work. And I, you know, I had the sense that my next job, my next um, mission, I wanted, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to be big. I wanted to mean something. I wanted to, you know, work toward something bigger with somebody who had a really big vision for the country. So I was lucky enough to be hired by Congresswoman Gabriela Giffords as her legislative director. Um, so we worked with her over the course of December. 2010. I started officially on January 3rd, um, 2011, and then five days later, she got shot in the head. Um, I didn't know them that well at the time, but three of her district staff were also shot. One of them, Gabe Derman, died. Um, one of them, um, who was uh, shot through the leg in the face, is now her uh, successor, Ron Barber, congressman from Tucson, and another, um, Pam Simon. Um, is a uh, is a fantastic advocate in Tucson. Five other people died, including a nine-year-old girl, and uh, twelve other people were were wounded. And I, before that point, I had never really thought that critically about. Honestly, I had never really thought that critically about uh, about gun violence. After Gabby got shot, I went on the internet, and I was shocked to learn that thirty thousand people die every year from from gun violence in the United States. I had had no idea. But um, at, at that moment, you know, we, regrettably, we, we didn't do anything. Um, you know, Gabby was in the hospital for, for months. She transferred to Houston where she did intensive physical rehab. Um, she got out of the hospital. She moved in with Mark, who is still, you know, her husband, who's an astronaut. He was, he was still in NASA at the time. They lived together in Houston for the first time as husband and wife. They moved back to Tucson. They bought a house. They started their life together, um, thinking the whole time, "What was their next? What was their next step going to be? You know, how could they move from their careers working government, you know, in the military, NASA, in Congress, um, to whatever the next stage would be? How are they going to um, have an effect on the face of American politics and society?" And you know, they, they weren't sure. They were working hard. Gabby spent seven days a week doing rehab, um, you know, and, and they were building a life. And then on <coughs> December 14th, 2012, 21st graders and six of their teachers were murdered in Newtown, Connecticut, and they said simply, enough. They had thought about gun violence a lot, obviously. We all had. But we said, we have to do something. We can't be silent any longer. <coughs> And I would bet that everybody in this room had the same feeling, am I right? After Newtown? That you know, we couldn't, we had to stand up, we had to be counted, we couldn't be silent and go about our daily lives like that just hadn't happened. Politics couldn't be conducted um, as, it, as it had before. So we decided that we wanted to do something, but we had no idea what we wanted to do, honestly. And we had a lot to learn. So we started looking at the issue of gun violence. And we weren't really sure how we were going to fit in. Because, you know, you've got Gabby and Mark. Mark's a veteran. He's a gun owner. Gabby's a third-generation Arizonan. 
a gun rights supporter, a gun owner herself. Um, they weren't sure how they were going to fit into the debate. So, so, but as we started learning more, we, we, looked at, we looked at the policies that exist around gun violence, and we were shocked, shocked at what we found. Um, everybody here knows about the about background checks, right? Um, so anybody know the estimated percentage of gun transactions that occur without a background check? Um, like, yeah, I think people say, um, various studies have shown that 60, only 60% 60 of all gun transactions actually uh, occur with a background check. Meaning that if you're a criminal and you want to buy a gun, um, you have two choices, right? You can go to the gun store where you're going to have to go through a background check, and um, or you're going to go to you're going to go to the internet. You're going to go to a, a gun show, and you're not going to have to have a, a background check. So if you're a criminal, what are you going to choose? No background check, right? It's like you're a terrorist and you're at the airport, and uh, you have a choice between going through the TSA security line and just bypassing and, and walking on the plane. What are you going to do? So we, we thought we thought that was crazy. We, we thought that was something that we could change. And then we looked at gun trafficking. And um, <coughs> let me ask you a question. Let me, let me, let me give you a quiz here. Say um, you or, or somebody you know, gets in their car, goes, buys a bunch of guns, fills their trunk up full of guns, 20, 30 guns, and drives to like the worst neighborhood in the highest crime area in this whole country, flips open their trunk, says guns for sale. Th 30 minutes later, your trunk is empty, your pocket is full of cash, you're driving away, you uh, throw a candy bar wrapper out the window. What crime have you committed? Littering. 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 That's nuts, right? We, we learned that while some, while some domestic abusers are prohibited from having guns, if you are married to somebody and you abuse them and you have a misdemeanor conviction for doing that, that, that you're prohibited from, from owning a gun. But that if you are merely a dating partner and you do the same thing, then you are free to walk into a gun store and buy a gun, you're not prohibited. We thought, that's not right, that's not common sense, that's something that we can change. And then we wondered, well, how, how can we do that as gun owners, as people who have had political lives, have served in Congress, we've run tough races, we've won tough races, what are we going to do? And, and we looked at the sort of political reality and we saw a gun lobby that had spent tens of millions of dollars a year opposing policies and legislation that the vast majority of Americans support. And we saw a playing field that was not level, not in the least. And we saw a narrative, a message that said that if you support common sense solutions, that you're somehow anti-gun. So we said, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to say, no way, no how is anybody going to tell us that just because we don't want to have criminals to have guns, that we are any less supporters of the Second Amendment than Wayne LaPierre, because that's BS. And then two, we said, if the NRA is gonna put up tens or hundreds of millions of dollars to cow members of Congress and state legislators into submission, then we're gonna go do the same thing. So Gabby and Mark have been traveling the country, they've been speaking out, they've been talking about why they support sensible gun laws as both gun violence victims and gun rights supporters, and they've been raising dollar after dollar after dollar. I think many of you have probably kicked in a few bucks online, and thank you very much. Um, and we hope that soon, and then into the future, that that's going to make a big difference. But in the next year, we have our work, our, our work cut out for us.